Lately, I've been living on a high. Okay. It got. It was. It was crazy. I'm telling you. Continue. <laughs> oh wow! I'm, you know, just trying to because. So how'd you find out all this stuff? <clears throat> how many conversations that I've overheard? Read through text because somebody forgot that they gave me the password, <laughs> and so my cool. fingerprint was in the phone because I bought the phone for her. so classic. <laughs> Along with uh, the funny thing is, like, and I had I I've never like really been the one to let go of connections when I had them, so I always had I always had uh people. That'll shoot me information whenever I needed it. But instead of like, hey, just to let you know. Mm. But, all right. For sure, wow. <laughs> all right. So, what made you stay? I guess that would be my question. All this mistreating, mm-hmm. um, disrespect, number mm-hmm. one. Not only for you, but for itself. On so many levels. Why stay? I can honestly answer it now. That I have no idea. But I would tell myself. During that time, like. Okay. You talk to her enough, eventually she's going to change. That didn't happen. Oh, so you had a fixer upper. You were trying to flip and make better, but it never happened. I guess you could say that because I was always I I have a loyalty trait, which is a gift and a curse because sometimes it can turn into blind loyalty. Loyalty to a fault. Yeah. Yeah, and that's 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 what it was. It was like I was in a blind loyalty type thing because I felt guilty for uh, for her leaving school. Oh, so you took on her uh, pain, responsibilities, and everything. Yeah, downfalls, um, everything in this relationship. Yeah, you were acting as a husband. Yeah. In a regular relationship, yeah, was there love for me? Yes, I don't know from her. Mm. Even though she would tell you yes, mm. but actions speak louder than words. Exactly, that was always my thing. So, and then multiple cases of cheating. <laughs> yeah, when does the straw break the camel's back? Uh, in that relationship. Yep. When I almost got stranded in Atlanta. <laughs> okay, speak on this. <laughs> uh, Multiple things of cheating. Mm-hmm. Now you're in Atlanta. Dang, you're almost stranded. Yeah. Go through this process. Um, Towards, well, in the end of the relationship, there was the uh, talk of what's next not what's next for us but what's next for uh, her career wise Mm. because at this point we had both done our best I've reached out I had reached out to people at the school to get her back in school right she was getting ready to go back in doing cheer Wow. One phone call from her father. Next thing you know, she's off to the army. Wow. So daddy rules. Yeah. Of course. Daddy's girl. So she goes off the uh, basic, graduates. I spend 300 something dollars for Uber because... The car was with her dad. (laughs) 
three hundred some dollars for Uber from Columbus to Atlanta, so I can get to her uncle's house. Wow! Because it was me, her uncle, and her brother riding up together to South Carolina. Right. We get up there. Everything's good. Everything's smooth. Uh, I got convicted while I was up there because I was about to propose to her. Oh. So let me get it straight. The Holy Ghost said, don't you Hold dare. Hold on. Hold on now. Let, let me gather all evidence. Uh-huh. Multiple cases of cheating. Uh-huh. In Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And in your heart, or in your mind, you say, okay, I'm going to propose. Mm-hmm. Do you think proposing will make everything better? Before the conviction, I thought I was, I thought I was good. I, I went back and forth for a while. I was like, do I really want to do this? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Don't you do it. It, it was like that. And on the trip, I was like, during the trip, I literally said to myself, I was like, we're going to take this day by day. Mm. Let's see what happens. So you purchased a ring. Yes. So it was it was definitely in your heart. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say something. <laughs> but I'm going to stay filtered. Okay. <laughs> First off, I just want to let y'all know God is good. Yeah. Uh, continue. <laughs> so, we get up there. Everything is going smooth. Her dad was throwing slick shots at me. But I always had an easy, real quick, good, subtle rebuttal for him. Always. To, uh, you know, shut his mouth whenever I needed to. Okay. And that's when I was like, yeah, I'm finna go take this ring to the pawn shop, get some money. <laughs> and so I kept it. We took pictures and went our separate ways. She texted me on my way back down there. Cause we went, we left uh that next morning. Right. Back down to uh, Atlanta. Now, the arrangements were supposed to be that her brother was supposed to take bring me back here. Right. Her grandma and her brother went back to Mississippi. Her uncle literally told me, I can't take you. Oh, snap. You got somebody that can come get you? Ooh. At that time, we were estranged, so I did not want to call you. And listen, if he would have called, I, and then I knew for a fact if I would have called is, you, if I would have called you, I knew it would have stirred up some stuff with them based off what they had said. If I would have told you exactly what they said, listen, if he would have called me as a TDK member, <laughs> I've been brothers keeping for a very long time. Facts. So. If he would have called, I guarantee you had a game. For sure. Of course, he'd have had my foot in his tail That's on the way true. back. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'd have came. That's, That's what a brother's true. keeper does. At the end of the day, just because your brother go astray. And like I always tell him, a lot of times, you, you just got to get that work. Like yeah. People have to experience Life Mm -hmm. without God. Yeah. I feel like it's important. Because when you out there on that ledge, Mm -hmm. you realize and you look back and you say, God, I need you. (laughs) (laughs) But go ahead. So, yeah. Didn't want to call you. Did not want to call my mom. Oh, man. You, You better call me. I ain't called the one person I called that I was like, please pick up the phone was my first love. First love. 
somehow comes back into the picture. What? Because we was already. I mean, I feel you. This was you when know. this is when we was rekindling the friendship, and when we had got to the point where we was like, okay, like all that other stuff that, that all that past stuff, we can put that behind us. Let's just you know focus on the right now. She literally drove from Columbus up there to uh to um college girl's uncle's house so, to pick me up and go back to Columbus. So and um, didn't want me to give her any gas money. So my question is this. Did she put her foot up your tail on the ride back? And first love, if you didn't you should be ashamed. Of oh no, she. Okay, well, she, well, she. She for sure. Uh, she should have gave. Now at that time, at that time, she cussed me out. Cussing? That's about right. <laughs> she cussed me out. All right. All right. So she curses you out mm-hmm. on y'all ride home. Yeah, literally the entire All ride. Right. So that's like a. This is it. <laughs> College girl is over. Yeah, because after that, that's college when, girl has some ways about her. Yeah, that's when that's when we was like uh, we was communicating, and she was still doing the same stuff there that she was doing here. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I ain't really putting up with that no more. Right. And then she was like, enough uh, is enough. Uh huh. That's when so she was doing the uh, uh, unknowingly using an abusive relationship. Mm hmm. Men get abused too, and then that's when she pulled the same line from uh, the BT relationship. I don't want to lose you. Let's just be friends. Sounds about right. Okay, college girl is done and over with. Yes. Now we on the finale. The finale. Here's the finale. Yeah. We're wrapping up here close. Mm-hmm. We're soon to wrap up. Mm-hmm. Well, since you're listening on our TBK podcast, this is called. Um, um, casual conversation, relationship talk. Yeah, this is what this is called. Um, check out our sponsors. Mm-hmm. Our sponsors is FNX Phoenix Fitness. Rise up. Go to Phoenix Fitness. Go well, well FNX yeah, FNX Fitness dot com. If you want to go ahead and get you some supplements, go ahead for fifteen percent off. Come on, go ahead and. Put in the promo code TBK FAM. That's TBK FAM. That's all you got to do. TBK FAM, 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 <laughs> FAM, FAM, FAM. And we can't forget about our other sponsor. Our other sponsor. Listen, ladies, uh-huh. you need your hair done. Come on now. You need your hair fried, dyed, laid to the side. Come on. You can't find the right products to put in your hair. Uh huh. So we have Pure by Her Glory, by the hair care connoisseur herself, Miss Tiffany, Tiffany Miller. Miller. All day, man, I'm trying to tell you, she gives good. Confident and style. Yeah, yeah. This girl right here, she has a lot of my money <laughs> because my wife loves her units. And when I tell you, it look so natural. So go check her out. Pure by her glory. All day. We'll post a link somewhere around here. Um now. Back to the story. Uh huh. We've reached the finale, right? And I already know you want to know the time frame. Of course. Of this, like me, I love uh, time frames. I'm not gonna lie to you. You lost count. It was a month. So it was a month <laughs> of getting with college girl. Just about right. Month of uh getting out of that relationship. So before you got with college girl, you was with BT. How long did it take you to go from BT to college girl? Four months. Four months. Uh-huh. So 
College Girl to BT. Time for no, College Girl to Finale? Yeah, College Girl to Finale. One. One. All right. As we wrap this up. I'm going to show y'all something, though. Pay attention. Oh, and just, just to clarify that I'm not just like hopping in relationships all the time. The last two lasted a year. I was with both of those girls for a year. All right, continue. I'll show you something. I can show you better than I can tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, go ahead. So, at that point, for finale literally was around since the beginning. Oh, at the same time with uh, First Love? Well, I met her then, but it wasn't anything that I was feeling then. So finale was First Love have the, been there the since whole the time. beginning. Okay. Friends, huh? Yeah. So he was in the friend zone with finale and First Love. I was recently in the friend zone with uh, First Love. Like, we had just rekindled gotcha. during the relationship with College Girl. Gotcha. And Finale was my best friend. Ooh. Like, legit told each other everything. Yeah. I've had that before. <laughs> Bless my heart. Go ahead. Yeah. Fine. Uh, we we'll always knew that we both had crushes on each other since high school. Uh-huh. Never, you know, fessed up to it. Besides the one time that I did fess up to it and got turned down because she had a boyfriend. Keep it up, man. Y'all doing your thing. Go ahead. Yeah. So at that point, she was. Uh, the shoulder that I cried on. Wow. And went from this finale. Yeah. So finale knows yo. She knew everything. She knew everything. Yeah. She's literally like a hit bear. A hit person. Mm-hmm. A hit woman. I want to say hit man. Yeah. But a hit woman. Yeah, she knew everything. Okay. Go. And which is deadly. Yeah. Which is deadly. And I'm trying to tell you. Go ahead. I'll break it down after. Yeah, yeah, I'll break yeah, it down yeah, yeah. after. I'll break it so, down after. Guaranteed. So that was also when I uh we were together during the time of we were together two months before the devastating loss in my life. Yeah, I know. And I mean, you can tell. No, nah, I'm, I'm putting the time frame in my head. I'm gonna say it though. Okay, he's gonna say it. And she was. We were together when I at first like, like really said, "All right, I'm gonna come back to church." Mm. So it was a mentality shift for me. And she didn't adjust to that. Wow. Because she had got used to this one version of me. Got you. So it was like, yeah, I ain't that dude no more. So you were trying to make a transition. Mm hmm. So you felt the tug on your heart. Yeah. To get back into position. Mm hmm. Go ahead. So, uh, for those of you that don't know, in December of, uh, what was that, 2018? Yeah. December 2018, I lost my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And that kind of like shook my core. And this is, this is where things get crazy. So, just like the uh, previous two relationships, somebody was in uh, Finale's ear. I told her, 
You should go to the Navy. What is up with y'all leaving to go different places? <laughs> so she said, you know what? All right, cool. What's up? She left a few weeks before my grandmother passed. Ooh. So the one person that I confided in. The person you used to crying, crying to and crying on. Was no longer there. Right. So I had to deal with this by myself. Wow, trying to uh, be the backbone for my family. Yeah. Because they weren't going to do it. And that was the uh, trait instilled in me by my grandmother. Because she was the backbone. And the person that she trained up to be the backbone was me. Everybody else wasn't there. Because that's who had raised me. I'm with you. So, losing her without having that shoulder to cry on and getting back to a point to where we could finally talk to each other. She was upset with me over uh, a letter that I didn't end up sending. She sent a letter to me while she was in basic. Gotcha. I didn't send a letter to her Mm. because... My Mima just passed. Right. I didn't want to talk to nobody if I couldn't like say it. Mm-hmm. So I'm secluded, going to work every day. Literally going to work, going home, go to the church, go to work, go home, go to the church. That's all I did. Mm. It was like a blur. So at that point, the relationship was like. It was a blur for the first uh, few months. And we had got to the point to where uh, when we finally did start communicating after she was uh, upset with me and I apologized for it. uh, I noticed that she was doing like her traits were similar to college girl. So I was like, I backed out for a little bit. And then she had got aggressive. So that's when I backed out some more. So we didn't talk for about a good few months. Right. And during that time, that's when uh that's when we first started doing the TBK stuff. Ooh. And you know I was in my grind then. Yeah. Who's in that bag? And then that's when she came back around. She came back around like in the middle of that. Mm. And it threw me off. Because now I'm still dealing with my transition and I'm telling her like, okay, but if you're going to be in this relationship with me, you got to want what I want. And I want Jesus Christ. Right. So either that's what you want or we not really going to be able to do this. So you didn't want to be unequally yoked anymore. Yeah. And I would get the uh, this is when the false promises started. Mm. And once that happened it transitioned from false promises to just wanting to be spoiled by me. But when I couldn't do it, it was an issue. Mm. So when all your attention mm-hmm. and when you weren't able to give all that, mm-hmm. that's when it became a problem. From a long distance. Like we're in two different time zones. Wow. It's like, what do you expect? <laughs> We're in two different time zones. You're calling me when I only have, uh, when I got to get up in like an hour to mm-hmm, go to work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm answering, but I'm like sleep talking to you right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm delirious on this entire conversation. Got gotcha. you. So I might say some stuff. I don't know what I said. <laughs> so it was always then and. 
like in the middle of my work day. So even though I was producing that work, I was still getting in trouble because mm. I would leave my desk to go answer this phone call. Right mm. oh, you like, putting your job on the line. Yeah. And at that point, that's when I was kind of fed up with my job anyway. So I was like, I got immunity. Like, you can't touch me because if you do, you're losing pretty much all your money. Because by this point at the job, I had broken every record. I was setting new stuff. I was breaking my own stuff. Right. So I was like, all right. So you was uh, Michael Jordan. That's how I felt. That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) <laughs> That's how I felt, legit. But so, yeah, it got to that. Then I left the job, and when I left, that's when it got worse. Relationship worse. Mm-hmm. Okay. Worse in the sense of, uh, of I. That's when I noticed more of. The stagnant and not enough growth. Mm. But I was blind loyalty, didn't want to end it. Because I had already told her, I was like, like you you're my best friend first. So like before we even got in a relationship, like you still my best friend. Like I still even to this day I still care about her, but I know for a fact, like you'll never go back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you get with fine the final, the finale, mm-hmm. the last dance. Mm-hmm. We're not gonna say the last dance. We're just gonna say the <laughs> final. Uh huh. Um. What caused the breakage? Me being fed up with repetition. It was the same mentality from Dawson Girl to uh, BT, the college girl. She had the same mentality as them. So when I started to notice these traits of the uh, abusive relationship, Mm. I'm like, okay. I've given you two warnings already that I'm not comfortable in this situation. Mm -hmm. You didn't take heed to these warnings. Right. You came to me and said, because she, at that time, that's when she was doing the whole, uh, whole, uh, she loved me today, don't love me the next day. She, that's when she would play the, uh, she'd get upset. Very fast. I think it's funny because she knows everything. Yeah. You would figure in this type of relationship mm-hmm. that a person who knows you, know what you've been through, would know what to do and would know what not to do. Mm-hmm. And what's the triggers? Mm-hmm. I'm going to show you something after this is done. Pay attention. So, yeah. So, she went into the uh, love you today, I'm mad at you the next day deal. And I was, and she had came to me and said uh, she was going through a lot mentally. I said, okay, if you need to not be in this relationship, I'm cool with that. As long as, you know, I'm still going to be able to support you, but I'm not going to sit here and hinder you. I'm not going to be a hindrance to you while you're trying to figure out stuff. Right. And she was like, no, no, you you ain't going to do all of that. (laughs) But then came to me later and said, yeah, you got to do all that. I don't know if I can do this. I said, okay, bet. (laughs) Set me free. I said, okay, bet. Then she hit me with the, uh, she came back later because that's how I ended that conversation I was like alright cool whatever yeah. works for you she probably wanted you to fight more she hit me back later she said so uh, because by that time 
I had taken all our stuff off social media. So she was like, so we broken up now? I said, you told me that you don't think you can do this. Did you not? She said, I did, but I didn't mean Basically, don't, like don't that. Don't you take tabs off of me. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I didn't mean like that. I was like, no, that, that is what you meant. Because you said you can't do this relationship anymore. So how else did you expect for me to take that? <laughs> so after that, she was like, okay, well, I guess we just broken up then. But then she would hit me with the, I just want my best friend back. That's what's up. And I was like, if you looking for a guy that was like ultra depressed, that was holding on to stuff and drinking his sorrows away, he gone. Like he's buried and he's not coming back. Mm. Because the guy that I am now is somebody totally different than that guy. Change age. Yeah. So we had left it at that. And we haven't spoke since. That was the final yeah. countdown. Final finale. Mm-hmm. Y'all ready? <laughs> I am. All right, listen. If you pay attention to their different patterns of the relationship, going from one relationship to the next relationship, to the next relationship, to the next relationship, Mm -hmm. not really giving yourself time to heal properly. Yeah. When somebody get cut, I'm talking about deep cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's certain things that has to happen. If the cut is deep enough, nine times out of ten, you have to get stitches. Mm-hmm. And then you have to go through a certain period where the stitches are on. Mm-hmm. And once the stitches are on, it's for a certain amount of time yeah. on the womb. I'm familiar. To keep the womb closed. I'm familiar. Right? Yes. Now, after the womb has healed, then the doctor comes back, cut the stitches out. Mm-hmm. This is process of healing. Now, I want you to catch this. So, Cuts the stitches off. And still then, even the womb is still a little shaky. Right? Mm -hmm. And over time, it heals. What a lot of us do when we get a relationship, I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it myself. That's why I can speak from this vantage point right here. Yeah. We get the cut. It's real deep. From the first... I'm talking about from the first relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cut is deep. You put the band aid on it. When it ultimately needs to be stitched up. But we take the band aid and move on to another relationship. Mm. Now I understand. The womb is still there, the cut's still deep. So you go to a different relationship with that same cut. And after they finish with you, guess yeah, what? Cut. The cut get deeper. No, it's the same cut. Mm. The cut get deeper. So then you say, I'm hurting. Because a lot of times we as men don't begin to realize we hurt yeah. until we go through some stuff. Yeah. So in the midst of all of that, okay, we say, let's get some stitches. Because it's, it's, the cut is deep now. Yeah, yeah. It's very deep. Mm-hmm. Ain't no band-aid that's gonna hold this together. So we go to the next relationship with the stitches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now understand it's a healing process while the stitches are on. Yeah. So after that relationship over, 
the cut is cut again. Mm. The moral of the story is this. Before you go to any type of relationship, you must heal first, regardless of the situation. When you're in a relationship and you give yourself to another person, yeah. they ultimately take a piece of you. And that's a piece you can never get back. True. And that piece is called time. Time is part of your life. Yeah. So the time and the efforts you put into a relationship, you never get back. So in the midst of all this giving and giving and giving, you're not replenishing. Mm. That's why a lot of us walk away from these relationships broken and don't know how to cope with a lot of stuff. So that's why we move to drinking, mm-hmm. smoking, different other stuff that does us no good. So it's like we uh giving out of an empty pan. Yeah. Which you're not giving nothing. Exactly. So you go into different relationships and the reason why each relationship reminds you of a last relationship is because we haven't had time to really change our mentality. Mm. And we go for what's comfortable for us. Mm. And usually what's comfortable for us is usually what's bad for us. Mm. So in the midst of what's bad for us, we feel like we're going to fix it. We always feel like we fix our uppers. I'm going to stand with this person. I'm going to fix them up. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. You came in there and hand me down. I'm going to go ahead and show you what <laughs> true love look like. But ultimately, you don't even know what true love look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're still broken from ever, I mean, whatever third, fourth, fifth relationship mm-hmm. you've been in. You're still yet broken. And you haven't had time to heal. So now you get to the grand finale. Mm-hmm. And ultimately... We not like I always feel like when you're in a relationship, the person that's with you have to pull you up. Yeah. I always feel like the person that you're with has to be able to build you up. Can't be so focused on okay, this and that, and not noticing that you're hurting inside of the relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with all this being said and with all this being done. Number one thing, if you get into a relationship with someone, please make sure as a believer that you get somebody who's walking the same walk that you're walking. Unequally yoked is a serious thing. You ne- It never works. It never works. It's crazy because it never works. Yeah. As much as we try to make it work, it just don't fit. Yeah. You don't believe what I believe. Your heart is not where my heart is. So eventually, 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 we're gonna we're gonna part ways. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, will the part be peaceful? Or will the part be very damaging? See, you've had a lot of damaging parts. Oh yeah. For Partings sure. like like listen, some stuff you have is like, okay, cool, bet. You cool, fine, all right. Bad. Some stuff was ripping. Yeah. And that, and for me, like, that's a difficult thing to heal from. Like the shorty that you thought about proposing to. That's a different level of mm-hmm. feeling there. Because you thinking of it like forever. Yeah. Like. I'm going to sacrifice everything that happened in this relationship to still say, will you marry me? Mm -hmm. You better be thinking, God, he intervened. (laughs) You don't know how many times, boy. Thank God he intervened. I said, Jesus, you saved me. I'm trying to tell you. Like, you got to understand that. I always tell people, you can't trust yourself. Mm -hmm. The most craziest thing is to trust your judgment because we would go with what's comfortable for us. Yeah. 
This girl looks comfortable. She looks familiar. She looks like familiar territory. Familiar territory. But ultimately, it's just the same territory, different face. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was. Because they all said the same thing. Yeah. I don't want to lose you as a friend, though. Get your hand off me. (laughs) (laughs) That's what it is. Ultimately, it's like, um, I want to keep a piece of you. I want to keep tabs on you. Basically, Pretty I want to keep I, I want to keep you as a friend. Let me see what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? I just want to, but I want to make sure mm-hmm. you ain't being with nobody. Pretty much. Yeah, come on now. Listen. But you have to blame yourself because people can only do what you let them do. Yeah. So through these relationships, I, I mean, I truly hope you learn. Pick of up course. Things. Like, listen. Of course. Like, first of all, abuse is real. Yeah. Not just for women, but it's also for men, yeah. too. And that was, uh, I think that was the proudest moment for myself. Like, when I was, like, in that last relationship, when I was just like, yeah, nah. Like, yeah. Like, this is it. Yeah. Like, now, no more. Now, your next one. You're giving yourself time to build and build yourself up. Oh, for sure. Before you go to the next step with for any sure. type of relationship. Now, this we're going to be doing a, a series on relationship goals. Mm-hmm. This just so happened to be the first one. Now, if y'all want to know about my relationships, you have to hold off. <laughs> the end of the day, this is RJ's time to talk about his relationships and what he went through. What's the worst thing in a relationship that has happened to you to make you even say, man, you know something? This hurt. And this is a hard cactus to swallow. Uh, Any relationship or out of those? Any any relationship. Uh, Out of those. Let's go out of those because those are the relationships we're dealing with. Still be losing the kid. Yeah. You hear that? Now, do your mom know? No. She don't. She don't know now. <laughs> do you want to explain this or? Uh, I can. So I hope she don't see this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, things happen. Does. All right, continue. I made a mistake. I slipped up. We all do. And I was uh, I was trying to figure out how we were gonna go through with it. Um, because it was too late to uh to get the uh the medication. Mm-hmm. So it was already like here. I'm with you. And unbeknownst to me, she made the decision oh, for herself wow. to go to the doctor and, you know. Behind your back. Yeah. Wow. I never knew until uh, afterwards. Mm. Broke me. So that's the worst thing. Yeah. How did you recover from that? Kinda. Like, I I know it's probably always that thought of, man, I could have had a seat. Yeah, that and when, like, situation that happened close to us, when when we had to sit in there and deal with that, that brought up some stuff. But... Other than that, like I've dealt with it, mm-hmm. but it's always triggers. Yeah, but you gotta know your triggers. Yeah, as long so, as I stay away from them, I'm I'm good. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't say stay away from. Them. Not yeah. not like that. But oh, you know, say, sometimes you gotta figure out how to deal with these triggers. Not like that. I'm That's saying good. like if I notice it and I sink in. Like, I don't allow myself to sink in. That's what I'm saying. Gotcha. Yeah. 
Like if I notice it, I'll address it and be like, "All right, this is what it is." Your mind will say, "So you just dropping all kind of bombs <laughs> on the podcast, but you can't come tell me nothing." My mom's always been the last to know stuff when it comes to me. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> That's all me. I and guess she, I have a way of bringing that. things out. You know, I believe communication, yeah, communication, communication, communication. That was the one right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, here's the thing, people. Listen. First of all, thank you for tuning into the podcast. Uh huh. Relationship goals. Uh. RJ's confession. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you got some about it. Um, continue to tune in. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna take this one a little further. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is this is not going to be the only relationship that we deal with. And at the end of everything, you're gonna find you're gonna find out and figure out how important it is to number one guard yourself. Mm-hmm. Protect yourself at all costs because hurt is real. Hurt to me, man, it's difficult to take back and it's difficult to get rid of. Yeah, for sure. Because it's something that stays with you forever. Like, yeah. as much as you may forgive them mm-hmm. and all that different other stuff, at the end of the day, man, pain. That's why we a lot of time are so defensive about a lot of stuff because we haven't yet dealt with the pain. Yeah, yeah. And then we find ourselves alone, not talking to anybody, mm-hmm. and we deal with it on our own. Then, in the midst of dealing with it, we it, it, it chokes us out. Yeah, because we have no outlet. Mm-hmm. It's just circulating here. Yeah, nine times out of ten, it's just heavy on your heart. Yeah, I feel. I feel like. Uh, in that in that moment in the last uh, relationship when my grandmother passed, mm-hmm. if I wouldn't have took the time to uh, write sweet potato pie, right. I'd have been lost. Cause that was a uh, that was my coat at the time. Got you. Yeah. Like, like really leaning into that. I feel like everybody needs an outlet. Mm-hmm. I keep an outlet. And I guarantee you, I plug it to my source, which is God. Yeah. That's what keeps me sane. That's what keeps me. That's what keeps my keeps my power mm-hmm. on 10. So when I'm waking up on 10, it's because man, I plugged it to my source. Mm-hmm. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If God before me, who? Yeah. But um, thank y'all for tuning in. Mm-hmm. I'm Mr. Made Over. And I'm your boy, RJ. And continue to hit that like button. Oh, yeah, subscribe. And comment and share, man. Share the video. Don't keep it to yeah, yourself. Yeah. If you on a... Uh you're on YouTube, hit the notification bell. If you are listening right now on Spotify, hit that heart. heart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And download it. Take this on, with man. you. You know, you got relationship problems too. Come on. It's a help you through some Come stuff. Come on, man. You probably relating to me right now. Yeah, he, he right. Yeah, brother, right. <laughs> I gave him all, of, all of that girl. I gave him all of him. Come on, but man. learn as we go. Yeah, yeah. As long as you learn. So to uh to my final destination, girl. Listen. <laughs> you ain't gotta worry about none of this. We good. And to his final destination, girl. Listen. You have to go through me. That is facts. First, you have to go through a smooth background check. Like through you, a lot of people. Yeah, right you got to go through you like know, a list. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, sis. 
And this, this is this is probably the end of the line for you I'm right here. Going through my brother, you, you know. And there's a lot of stuff you can't hide from me. That's true. So That's come facts. genuine. That's, That's how I feel. Come with the realest of the real. So final destination. Uh huh. You've been warned. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all fact. That's for real. <laughs> but uh, we're going to get with y'all next time. Key yeah. God first. And the rest and everything you want. It's going to happen. So, I will allow my brother to say show some love, man. <laughs> and until next time, we shall. Bid you adieu, and we out. Yes. Lately, I've been living on a highlight.